Hi, this is Mike Elliott, and you're watching SEC Filings TV. In this episode, we'll be talking to Mr. Jim Sear, Executive Chairman of Galactin Therapeutics, the leading developer of therapeutics that target galactin proteins to treat fibrosis and cancer. Galactin is a publicly traded company listed under ticker symbol GALT. Good afternoon, Jim. Thanks for joining us. Hi, good morning, Mike. It's nice to be here. In August, Galactin received a fast-track designation from the FDA for GR-MD-02 as a new treatment for non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Could you tell us more about NASH, as it's called, and what this FDA designation means? Sure, I'm happy to. NASH is an acronym for non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. It's a disease that's part of the progression of fatty liver disease, which is an epidemic right now in the country. Uh, you know, as you may notice, we have an obese population with some 95 million plus people falling in that category, about 30, you know, 30 35% of us, and growing. Uh, as a consequence, people are developing fat in their liver. Uh, recently, a Wall Street Journal article suggested that one in 10 children have fat in their liver. And we know from experience that hospitals around the country are reporting teenagers developing cirrhosis because of this disease. Um, fatty liver will eventually, in uh, a lot of patients, become inflamed, and when you get chronic inflammation, that's what they call NASH. Uh, people that have NASH, some of them, and it's hard to know which ones, but 60% of them will develop fibrosis in their liver, and that will include stage 1, 2, and 3, and ultimately stage 4 is cirrhosis, which we normally associate with people who have uh, drank excessively for a long period of time. The unfortunate part of this whole situation, Mike, is that fatty liver disease, NASH, stage 1, stage 2, and stage 3 fibrosis don't have symptoms. People don't know that they have the disease. The way it's typically detected is if they go to their physician and they um, get a blood test for ALT or AST, and then they, you know, they'll see their liver enzymes are uh, elevated and that something's going on. And then, they, then their doctor can go through a variety of other tests and do, uh, you know, drill down on it and find out if they really do have the disease. But it's a very, very large problem, and it's, it's, caught, it's becoming the number one reason for cirrhosis uh, in the country. The structure of the protocol for a clinical trial is critical in maneuvering down the regulatory pathway. Galactin structured its trial targeting a specific patient population, which is different than many phase one trials, which are usually very broad by nature. Please tell us a little bit more about why you structured the trials toward a more precise population. Well, we've been in close contact with the FDA, and, and they uh, who recently granted fast track approval designation to our compound, and, and, and they encouraged us to use these uh, patients that had very advanced disease because um, there is no treatment for these people today other than a liver transplant. And Mike, for those that are hoping for a liver transplant, it's estimated around 6,300, 6,400 transplants are done every year, and there are 15 million people that have NASH estimated, <laughs> with 60% of them having some degree of fibrosis. So um, we're using the advanced patients for a variety of reasons. You know, normally you have phase one trials that are designed with low doses um, of the drug. You wait until the second or third group of patients before you give them a therapeutic dose, uh, just because you're trying to prove safety, and then you want to do pharmacokinetic studies to see how long it takes for the drug to clear the system or be metabolized. What's different about our trial is that we're starting the very first patients with doses that are therapeutic by calculation, and then we're going to increase the dose in the second group of people by 100% and increase it again by 100% in the third dose. So it'll be two, four, and eight milligrams of our GRMDO2 drug. Uh, this, and there are going to be four doses, and these are people who have advanced fibrosis. So this is going to give us an opportunity to perhaps get a glimpse or a suggestion that the drug is working on fibrosis or on the disease, NASH, I should say, uh, in phase one which you normally wouldn't get until phase two. So every time we complete a, a cohort of patients, uh, we'll be measuring a variety of biomarkers, and there's over 20 of them. Uh, these are biomarkers that have been uh, known to correlate with the increase of the disease NASH and as, it, as it gets worse. Now, our hypothesis is that it's going to decrease as the disease uh, regresses, 
But we can't say that. We have to call it a hypothesis because no one's ever been able to reverse this disease before like we have done in animal studies. But in animal studies, we've seen substantial reduction in the disease NASH, and we've, uh, we've seen an incredible reduction in the amount of scar tissue, as well as increases in the uh, improvement in liver enzymes. The first patient was dosed with GR-MD-02 in July. Obviously, it's still early, but what are your expectations as to how long the trial will last and when investors could start looking for some preliminary data? Uh, Mike, we've, um, as, as you know, we've been granted fast-track approval by the FDA, and we are moving along as fast as we can. We have six sites that are recruiting patients, and so we're expecting now that all six sites are up that we'll finish the first cohort of patients uh, by the end of the year and that the second cohort will wrap up about April 1st, and the third cohort will wrap up at the end of June, uh, early, you know, 1st of July. That's our tentative uh, schedule. Uh, the trial has got some very unique design characteristics. As you know, most clinical trials in phase one will start with healthy volunteers. Uh, these are people who um, are uh, just in it to show you whether or not the disease is, the drug is safe to take, and then you go on and actually try to test people with the disease. But the FDA has encouraged us to use a clinical trial that has uh, stage three uh, fibrosis patients in, it, in addition to NASH. We don't know of anybody else that is, uh, is testing for this combination of the disease. And so what it's going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to uh, get a, a potential insight into indications that it might be working on the disease and not just safety. We'll be looking at the typical safety and pharmacokinetic information to see how long the drug is, takes to be metabolized in the body or in the blood. But we'll um, also be able to test for some 20 plus biomarkers that have been shown to correlate uh, to some degree with the increase in disease. Now when I say correlate, um, it's, um, it's an indication. It's not, a, not an ironclad guarantee, but an indication that the disease is getting worse when these biomarkers are increasing. So we're taking the hypothesis that if the disease is regressing, that the biomarkers should go down that normally go up with the regression of the disease. Um, whether or not it's true, we don't know, and we're, but we're, we're hoping it's true. And we think that the 10 drug companies that we are in, under non-disclosure with right now that are looking at our technology will, would find it interesting if the biomarkers were to decrease. We'll be able to uh, measure those at the end of each one of the cohorts. Now, the difficult thing is that all these, each one of these cohorts is getting a therapeutic dose, but they're only getting four doses. We expect that we're going to need to treat people for six months to a year with a one dose per week in order to actually you know, put them back into healthy condition. Uh, so it's questionable as to whether four doses would be enough to uh, produce enough change that these biomarkers could pick them up. We don't know how sensitive the biomarkers are. And so, but the possibility exists that at the end of each one of these cohorts, we could get data that was hinting or suggesting that our drug was in fact improving the, you know, the patient and, and the disease was regressing. That'd be very exciting. Why the initial focus on liver fibrosis as opposed to fibrosis indications? Well, liver fibrosis is a gigantic unmet medical need. I mean, if you look at the disease, fatty liver disease, um, it's, it's very, very prevalent. Matter of fact, fatty liver disease with acute and chronic inflammation is what NASH is. It is. It's estimated there are 15 million people who've advanced to that stage. Uh, prevalence data suggests that 60% of those people have some sort of fibrosis in their liver. Now, if you haven't if you haven't developed fibrosis, there's a chance you can reverse this problem. Once the fibrosis shows up, it looks like from the indicators that it's going to continue to evolve until you become a cirrhosis patient and need a liver transplant, which are only there's only a handful of those available every year. Uh, 6,300 will not meet the needs for hundreds of thousands of people. And what are Galekin's plans for expanded trials into other forms of the disease? Well, what's, what's fascinating is we do have evidence that this collectin-3 protein that we inhibit is not, not only is, is involved in causing fibrosis in the liver, but it's involved in causing fibrosis in, in kidneys and in lungs. And as you know, there's a growing problem in both of those areas in this country and that people on 
uh, dialysis um, are, are very, very growing population. Uh, we have evidence from animal studies that indicate that we can re we can reverse the amount of scar tissue in, in both of those diseases. So, our liver, our fibrosis franchise, you know, represents an opportunity to uh, develop a drug that potentially could have three blockbuster size indications. You know, the the typical size drug is a uh, 300, maybe 350 million dollars a year in annual sales. Uh, you know, you're looking here at a situation that is so uh, large with no competition that it could be, each one of them would be blockbuster in size, as in, you know, billions of dollars apiece. So we think that we're a very, uh, we could become a very desirable, you know, um, a takeover candidate by large pharma with any kind of success in humans. Jim, that's all the questions I had for today. Were there any other comments you wanted to add before we close? You know, we are a very shareholder-driven company, and um uh, and yeah, we'd uh, welcome questions. Anybody that's uh, listening audience uh, is interested but has a, you know, a desire to learn more, they should go to galactantherapeutics.com. If they can't find the information they're looking for there, there's phone numbers to contact. We would invite anybody to call the office and we'll clear up their, um, their uh, request for information. Jim, thanks again for taking the time to join us. All right. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. We've been talking to Mr. Jim Sear. He's the executive chairman of Galactin Therapeutics, the leading developer of therapeutics that target galactin proteins to treat fibrosis and cancer. Galactin is a publicly traded company listed under ticker symbol GALT. To learn more about them, please visit their website at www.galactintherapeutics.com. Thank you for watching SEC Filings TV.